since we've been in lockdown, lots of people have asked us what the difference is between working at home and working in a managed office environment for your carbon footprint. So we've run some scenarios to see what the difference is. This is our first scenario for the lone home worker. We're making an assumption here of the total gas usage for heating and hot water. We're going to add on here 25% for the home working that represents an extra eight hours each day compared with what would normally happen. And this is where we get a number of 0.6 tonnes of CO2 per year. We need to add on extras for electricity usage. And clearly that comprises of things such as the desk setup here with the computers, etc., and the lighting and also sundries for cups of tea and things like that. Adding this all together and right at the edge, end of that page there, this adds up to 0.7 tonnes of CO2 per person per year. Our next scenario is much easier. This is the home worker, but with others also home who are not working in this instance. The difference here is just that electricity uplift that we discussed on scenario one. So that means that our home worker here is using 0.1 tonnes of CO2 per year. Here's our final scenario. This is the office based worker. Here you'd expect some efficiencies because offices are designed for multi occupancy. When we look at the figures for Carbon Footprint's own office based working, this comes out at 0.13 tonnes of CO2 per person per year. Immediately, I know you're going to ask about what the commute means, and we'll look at this just in a moment. This now looks at the commute. This represents a typical 10 mile a day round trip to the office. If we were to take this in an average diesel car, that would add another 0.67 tonnes of CO2 onto what was already a 0.13 tonne CO2 office based emission. That would take the office plus the commute up to 0.8 tonnes. That's the highest number that we've seen so far in the scenarios. I make the note there that although that 10 miles a day actually describes my own round trip, my car is electric and it does use 100% renewable energy, so I have no carbon footprint from my car when I do go into the office. What we've seen then from the three scenarios we've looked at, the lowest footprint comes from the home worker whose house is already occupied by others. Next is the lone home worker with 0.7 tonnes and the office worker plus their commute, assuming here that this is done in a diesel car, comes out slightly higher than the lone home worker. There are clearly a number of considerations that we need to make. Here we touched on the idea of the electric car on renewables removing the footprint. There are also variations here when a renewable tariff is chosen either by the office or at home. And obviously we would always recommend in all those different scenarios that renewable energy is chosen. There are other ways of traveling, of course, as well. You may travel by bus or by train. Those both have lower carbon intensities. They would also bear in mind there, people will also be traveling a longer distance. So you need to work these things out individually. Finally, as we go forward through time, it seems inevitable that there will be a mix of home and office working, both in terms of safety following the COVID-19 outbreak and in terms of managing our own environmental impact. Any carbon management journey starts with a solid measurement of your carbon footprint. If you'd like some help getting started with that, please contact us.